While the Starship launch has been the hottest topic for the past week due to its resounding success, in space, someone is crying. Oh my, Boeing's cursed Starliner is in big trouble once again, as teams have discovered another helium leak in the spacecraft module, bringing the total number of leaks to five now. How are Boeing and NASA going to solve this problem? Can Dragon save the day? Let's find out on today's episode of Alpha Tech. After many years of delays and technical issues, Boeing's Starliner finally reached the ISS with NASA astronauts on board last week. However, the exact timing for its undocking and return of the two-person crew to the surface is still unclear. Teams have discovered an astonishing five different helium leaks so far, each representing yet another thorn in the spacecraft's already cursed development. In a statement on June 10th, NASA and Boeing revealed that spacecraft teams were evaluating the potential impacts of five small leaks in the service module's helium manifolds on the remainder of the mission. This was the first mention of there being five leaks. Previously, NASA had only acknowledged four leaks during a briefing shortly after the spacecraft's June 6th docking with the International Space Station. Josh Fish, a NASA spokesperson, clarified in a June 11th statement that the fifth leak was detected around the time of the post-docking briefing. The leak is considerably smaller than the others and has been recorded at 1.7 pounds per square inch per minute, he explained. Initially, NASA was aware of one leak during Starliner's June 5th launch, which had been detected after a scrub launch attempt on May 6th. At that time, NASA and Boeing officials believed that it was an isolated issue, likely caused by a defect in a seal. The team took some time to assess the issue before launching the shuttle, but ultimately, Boeing and NASA decided to proceed with the crew flying on the leaking Starliner spacecraft without resolving the problem. Even hours after the launch, controllers detected two more leaks, including a significant one at 395 psi a minute, as noted by Steve Stitch, NASA's commercial crew program manager. A fourth, smaller leak at 7.5 psi per minute was discovered after docking. Stitch mentioned, over the next few days, we need to assess the leak rate and determine our next steps for the mission. The spacecraft comprises a reusable crew capsule and disposable service module. Helium is used in the spacecraft's propulsion system to enable thruster firings without causing combustion or toxicity. Steve Stitch, NASA's commercial crew program manager, said in a pre-launch briefing for Starliner, we can handle this particular leak if that leak rate were to grow even up to 100 times. Indeed, it is approaching that level. Despite the leaks indicating a larger issue with the propulsion system, NASA remains confident in its commercial partner and is downplaying the spacecraft's anomalies. Although NASA has stopped the leaks by closing the helium manifolds in the propulsion system after docking, these will need to be reopened for the spacecraft's thrusters to perform undocking and deorbit maneuvers. Engineers estimate that Starliner has enough helium to support 70 hours of flight operations while only seven hours are needed for its return back to Earth. In addition to the helium leaks, engineers were investigating a reaction control system, RCS thruster, that was shut down during the spacecraft's journey to the ISS. Although four other thrusters were temporarily turned off by flight software, they were later re-enabled. Additionally, an RCS oxidizer isolation valve in Starliner's service module was not properly closed. An RCS uses thrusters for attitude control and steering, while the oxidizer isolation valve regulates the flow of oxidizer, which is essential for a burn in the fuel in the thrusters. Mission managers are continuing to work through the return plan, which includes assessments of flight rationale, fault tolerance, and potential operational mitigations for the remainder of the flight, the space agency said. The teams have had some time to address these issues. NASA initially scheduled Starliner's undocking June 14th, but postponed it to no earlier than the 18th to avoid a conflict with a June 13th ISS spacewalk by NASA astronauts Tracy Dyson and Matt Dominic. Well, our astronauts are going to have to wait longer to get home. In fact, the Starliner spacecraft can only remain docked with the ISS for up to 45 days. If issues continue to delay the return of the astronauts on Starliner, it would indeed be an embarrassing outcome for a giant once known everywhere in the space industry. Coincidentally, as Starliner faced these unforeseen issues, the ISS also encountered some problems of its own. On June 12th, at approximately 528 Central Time, audio aired on the NASA live stream from a ground simulation audio channel indicating that a crew member was experiencing effects related to decompression sickness. This caused concern for many people and raised various theories about problems on the ISS. Fortunately, NASA's subsequent announcement alleviated our concerns, stating that it was all a misunderstanding. The announcement clarified that there is no emergency situation aboard the International Space Station. 
The audio was inadvertently misrouted from an ongoing simulation where crew members and ground teams train for various scenarios in space and are not related to a real emergency. The International Space Station crew members were in their deep sleep period at that time. I'll remain healthy and safe. However, to be honest, even such a misunderstanding requires NASA officials to be extremely vigilant in monitoring the ISS. If a situation arises that they cannot promptly handle, that would be a space disaster. Of course, the paramount concern for all of us when it comes to human space missions is reliable safety. Even the smallest errors have the potential to endanger astronauts. In case of Starliner, NASA and Boeing may boast about what they'll do and how they'll check things, but concerns for the astronauts are growing. In reality, these two organizations are overly confident about the risks present up there in space. What could be the backup solution for this flight? Well, nothing's better than SpaceX's Crew Dragon, a company that's provided necessary flights to the ISS since 2020, compensating for Starliner's absence and conducting its own contracted flights. A much better situation than NASA having a sole source contract with its preferred provider, Boeing. This is the short-term emergency solution, but what about the long-term solution? Will NASA shut down Starliner? Or will it continue despite the technical flaws and concerns for the astronauts? Indeed, Starliner is no longer an opportunity for Boeing to reclaim its glamorous image as a major aerospace company capable of building and flying rocket and spacecraft hardware. Besides Starliner, Boeing's work on the SLS have also caused numerous delays and cost overruns, leaving us exasperated. However, NASA might not easily abandon such contracts. Boeing managed the Starliner project as a government contracting job, where NASA made development decisions and provided acceptance criteria. Under this arrangement, Boeing was responsible for providing enough engineers and resources to meet the set criteria. This cost-plus arrangement is what Boeing's space division is familiar with and knows how to execute. It's also with what NASA is comfortable leading. While this approach can be terribly expensive, it usually results in delivering what got asked for. However, it seems that this mindset permeated in the Starliner program, even though the contractor buyer arrangement was a bit different. In this case, Boeing, as the contractor, was responsible for the results. But this shift in responsibility was not fully embraced by Boeing's engineers. This lack of ownership led to lapses in the discipline of integration management. There are numerous examples of issues that arose due to this problem. For example, on the first attempt, no one thought to run an end-to-end -end test of the software interacting with data throughout the flight. Valves were approved without considering the environment they'd be subjected to and for how long. A roll of tape was approved without checking if it was tested under all reasonable atmospheric conditions. These issues happened because Boeing engineers did not take full responsibility for their work. They focused solely on their individual tasks without considering the broader context. While this attitude can be forgiven when engineers are told precisely what to do and how to do it, it's a failure of management to tolerate such behavior when the contractor is responsible for the results. Building a new craft by incorporating design changes from the lessons learned would lead to a more reliable result, similar to SpaceX's approach. But unlike SpaceX, which saves costs in this process, Boeing would incur significantly higher expenses. Yet there's an issue. No matter how long NASA extends its contract with Boeing, if Boeing cannot ensure that its spacecraft doesn't cause concern, then Starliner is a poor choice. While Crew Dragon has been functioning splendidly, the commercial crew program strategy is to have two operational vehicles capable of transporting astronauts to and from low Earth orbit. This approach fosters competition and provides redundancy in case one vehicle encounters issues. Aside from SpaceX's Dragon, another anticipated long-term solution is the cargo version of Sierra Nevada's Dream Chaser, which is expected to be ready for flight in the fall of this year. Dream Chaser is a lifting body spacecraft that will launch vertically on a Vulcan Centaur rocket and land horizontally upon returning to Earth, similar to the Space Shuttle. Sierra Nevada is also developing a crewed version of Dream Chaser. A crewed Dream Chaser could be used for the crew program in commercial markets, like space tourism and commercial space stations. There's no reason why if Boeing cannot ensure Starliner's reliability, the crew Dream Chaser could not step into the breach. What do you think the future holds for Starliner and Boeing? Leave us a comment and let us know. By the way, if you enjoy this video, please give us a like and subscribe. That's all for today's episode. Thanks for watching and see you next time.